Hi, it's Robin here. We're talking about odds, risk and rates. Looking at two nominal variables, each of which have two categories. So they're called binary variables and they form a 2 by 2 contingency table. Specifically, we're going to be looking at risk, also called prevalence measures, and various effect size measures. First of all, we're going to look at the differences between the two groups in terms of risk and the measures there we look at are called the absolute risk difference or the number needed to treat, the NNT. We also can we look at various ratios, um, the risk ratio, RR, also called the incidence rate ratio and concerning odds, and we're looking at the odds ratio. We can see how to do the analysis in OpenEFI, which is a free web-based program which you can either do on the web or download onto your computer free of charge. You can see how to do it in SPSS and R as well. A lot more details on my website. Let's get started. So here is a study, a very large study of over 10,000 subjects, which was looking at the incident of heart attack, giving people aspirin to see if it reduced heart attacks. So we've got in the treatment group, 55 people had a heart attack out of 5,431 compared to the control group where 96 had a heart attack out of 5,488. We can think of this table in a more generic manner. So we can think of the first column, instead of being treatment, as being some sort of exposure. It might not be um, a negative exposure. It might not be a harmful substance. It could be something good like eating veg or taking one glass of wine a day. And then we can also think about the heart attack as being an event or a prevalence of a particular disease. So let's look at our first measure. We can consider first the risk of a heart attack in the treatment or exposed group. So that is simply 55 divided by the total in the group, which is 5,431. And that equals a proportion. So proportions are, in effect, probabilities. And we get about 1%. Similarly, we can look at the risk of not having a heart attack in the treatment group. And that is just the upper value, B, if you think of the cells. And that gives 0.98. 98% of the people who didn't suffer a heart attack who were in the placebo group. I mean, we're in the treatment group. We can check that these values are correct because we know the probability of having a heart attack and not having a heart attack in the treatment group covers everyone. So the probability of those two added together must equal 1, which they do. Right, so also we've got the risk of a heart attack in the control group. So we do the same thing. We take cell C, which is 96, and divide that by the total in the control group, which is 5,488. And that gives us just under 2%. We also can consider odds, which are slightly different to risks, because they're not concerned with proportions. They're concerned just with the two values in the group. So we now take 55 and divide that just by the number who didn't have a heart attack in the treatment group, which is 5,376, which gives us just 1%. And similarly, we can consider the odds against having a heart attack, whereas before we considered the odds for. So it's the other way around. Instead of A over B, it's B over A, and we get 97.7. We can also check these values by considering the multiplication of the two. If we times one by the other, it should equal one, which they do do. And we consider also the odds for a heart attack in the control group, which again, just those two values in cells C and D, which is 0 0.0178, just below 2%. So, taking our main values we have, these four, we can see that the risk in the heart attack group, in the treatment group of heart attacks, is pretty much the same as the odds in, of having a heart attack in a treatment group. 0 0.0101 compared to 0 0.0102. And similarly, for the risk of a heart attack in the control groups compared to the odds of having heart attack in the control group. But the important thing is they're not always the 
the same. They don't usually equal one another. It's only if the prevalence is very low. In other words, that event prevalence disease column is very low in comparison to the no event, then they're similar. And um, if you look in my notes, you'll find this article describing that actually as it goes up, the discrepancy becomes greater and greater. Right, so let's consider some of these effect size measures now. The first time for effect size measures, we're going to look at uh, those based upon differences. And the first difference we had was risk. We had the risk for the treatment group and a risk for the control group. And if you just take the difference between the two, it's called the absolute risk difference. And we get there 0.0073, which equals 0.73%. What does that mean? Well, you can interpret that as for every 100 patients, 0.73 of a patient did not suffer a heart attack due to the treatment. So treatment saved 0.73 of a patient gets a heart attack. Well, this is a strange way of putting it. There is a better way. Let's consider this next measure. This next measure, called the number needed to treat, NNT, uses that absolute risk difference and just takes its reciprocal, basically. It takes a value over 1, and we get 135.7. And what that's saying is taking approximately 136 patients saves one's life. The question is, are you the one person out of that 136 patients whose life it saved. There are problems with this measure. Um, it's nice and easy, and uh, people love quoting it at the moment. It's a very popular measure, but well worthwhile looking at my notes to explain some of the dangers of this measure. Simplicity is not always the best thing. Now let's move on to some measures based upon ratios. A ratio is just basically two numbers, one divided by the other. So, here we go. First of all, the odds for a heart attack in a treatment group were 55 divided by 5,376, 5, which we said before. And then we also said the odds for a heart attack in a control group was that value, C divided by D. So, if we just divide one by the other, and we can work out an easy way of doing it. It becomes AD divided by BC. Um, we have what's called the odds ratio. And the odds ratio of treatment to placebo is 0.573. And the odds ratio in the other direction, the placebo to treatment group, is 1.74. How can we interpret these values? Well, let's have a look. First of all, you can say that our 0.573 means that the odds of having a heart attack in the treatment group are 0.573. That is nearly half that of the control group, if you notice. Because the control group was 0.174. Similarly, you can say for the placebo or control group, whichever you want to call it, the odds of having a heart attack in the control group is a 1.74 times that the treatment group. Also, there is a relationship between these two, the treatment to placebo odds ratio and the placebo to treatment odds ratio. One is reciprocal of the other. So you can just divide one by one value over one gets the other value, so you don't have to work out both. Let's look at some more ratio measures. Back to our risks there of heart attack in the treatment group and heart attack in the control groups. We can actually just divide one by the other and we get 0.5789 as we said before, relative risk. And we can say that means that treatment reduces the risk of heart attack by 57.8%. Sounds an incredible success, doesn't it? But remember we're talking about an incidence of one to 1.7% really. And if this relative risk is less than 1, it means that the treatment is better than the control. Therefore, we consider another measure called the relative risk reduction. The relative risk reduction basically divides that value by the 
control risk. So we have at the top the point seven three percent. And we just divide it by our control value point zero one seven. Or we can do it another way, which is one minus the relative risk. And we end up with forty two percent. So what we've done there is achieved 42% reduction in deaths in the treatment group. So we can say here that the relative risk is 57%, but the relative risk reduction is 42%, which probably is more useful measure. That's also called the prevented fraction in the exposed group. At last value, the relative risk reduction. Question is, which value do you use? Do you use the odds ratio, or the relative risk, or the relative risk reduction? And um, there's a large amount of literature concerning this. Most people say you should always use the odds ratio. Um, dependent upon the study design and the prevalence level, you can then think about using the relative risk or the relative risk reduction. You do need to look at the literature, my notes, to find out exactly when to use each of these. We haven't talked about inferential statistics or confidence intervals. They are nowhere near as easy to work out as the values I've been discussing. Um, we use software for that, and that's why we're going to consider looking at various free packages. Just before we start doing that, I just want to mention that in the notes on the front page, there is a mind map basically describing what we've considered here, and I call the odds ratio best of breed, as you can see. Because I spent more time discussing this than I thought, the actual techniques on how to carry this out in OpenEpi, um, SPSS and R in the next YouTube video.